Today's questionable laptop shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Well, this is it. The day I've been waiting for. After years of not owning any Tandy machines, I can finally take part in Septandy. No, it's still September for us. It's only October for them. Okay, so there's good reason why I'm cutting it right to the wire for Septandy. I've spent hours trying to fix this Tandy 1400 HD for this video, and it's still completely dead. But through the cunning use of buying a whole second Tandy 1400D that's also broken, hopefully we can at least combine these two into one working, beautiful Tandy 1400D in all of its sub 10 megahertz IBM PCAT compatible glory, because I'm gonna need at least one of these things for upcoming Linuxy shenanigans. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy laptops that look like they were designed by people who have never seen a lap before, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this beefy behemoth of a laptop is part of the Tandy 1400 series, released at the end of 1987. They were very early IBM compatible laptops, one of the first by a third party manufacturer <sighs> to compete with this chunk, the 1986 IBM PC convertible. Although this Tandy came a year later, it was a much better deal. Both machines used the 8088 architecture, but the Tandy's NEC V20 advertised the ability to run at either 4.77 or 8 megahertz, actually 7.16. While this beautiful IBM was 4.77 or bust, these Tandys had a standard backlit black and white CGA display versus the IBM's <laughs> base non-backlit, impossible to read one. The Tandy came with 768K DRAM, while the IBM started out at 256K and capped out at just 640. The Tandy also had a ton of really useful ports on the back, while the IBM had basically none. Unless you count these goofball snap on the back expansions, which uh, yeah, you could actually stack into a really ridiculous long slab of a laptop. It even had stuff like a printer, totally weird. So the Tandy 1400s are really well loved and uh, I was really excited to find such a nice one. Especially the high end HD model with uh, <laughs> a 20 megabyte hard drive. The two lower versions of this, the LT and the FD, shipped with two floppy drives. And I'm really nostalgic for this screen in the middle form factor because when I was a kid, my first computer was a 286 Toshiba that I found at a flea market and it was laid out exactly like this. I spent many an hour in QBasic on that thing and uh, yeah, I hope to do the same with this. So I tried really hard to get this thing up and running, but <laughs> no matter what I did, when you plug in the power supply, nothing. Multimeter shows that the power supply is giving the right power. So I took it apart and uh, yeah, looking at the power board, <laughs> I have never seen in my life through hole capacitors that have leaked so egregiously. I mean, every single one had spilled its corrosive guts all over the place. <laughs> so I meticulously went through and replaced each capacitor, cleaned up the corrosion with vinegar and isopropyl alcohol. And uh, I was so excited because I just knew after all that work, it was gonna work. And uh, well, when has anything ever just worked around here? So that's why I picked up this other 1400 HD on eBay because it has power and lights up, but it just doesn't boot. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can combine these two into one working unit. Although since I've bought this thing, some very helpful people on Twitter have given me some hints about some deceptive little fuses that might be in the power supply on my recapped unit. So who knows, maybe we can get this one working and then have a second one to fix. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like say I wanted to build a website all about how IBM really dropped the ball in comparison to Tandy 
in the 80s. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but it would be well-designed, responsive, and mobile-friendly. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and works great on mobile devices. With Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can also optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code ACTIONRETRO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So the Tandy is pretty easy to take apart here, like many old computers. It's just uh, a bunch of regular screws. <laughs> Make sure there's no disc in the drive because the eject button will stop you from lifting the top case off. And the cables are on the left hand side. Two actual connectors on the board and then a ground wire which you have to unscrew. And we're free. So now what I want to do is take this power supply out and see if I can find a tiny fuse that might be blown. There we go. Kind of annoying, but here is our freshly recapped power supply board. Here you can see some of the corrosion from the capacitor is actually ate away at the finish of the metal. Anyway, let's see if we can find a fuse on here. Okay, so I actually found two things marked F on here, but I've never seen fuses that look like this before. They're like long black rectangles. So uh, yeah. I assume they're fuses. I have no idea if they're blown or not. So probably the smart thing to do is just jump them and see if it works. Yeah, look at that. It says 3.15A. That's a fuse. All right, with the totally appropriate solution of little bits of wire, let's bypass those fuses. <laughs> and see if this doesn't explode. There we go, little bits of wire in place. This is definitely a temporary solution, but uh, yeah, should be fine. Okay, so trial by fire, but hopefully not literally. I have the power supply hooked up to the motherboard and this fan is also hooked up to the motherboard. So if the power supply works, the fan should come on after I plug it in, which I haven't yet, and then hit the switch. So if you're watching this video, I did not explode. So that's looking pretty promising for plugging this in. Oh, the fan just did something. Hey, the fan's coming on. All right, well, I have it sort of back together and uh, yeah, there's no way this thing just boots right up, is there? Oh my God. It's making a terrible noise. Okay, so I pulled the power supply out of the other machine and just looking at it from the outside, it looks like there's way less corrosion. There's just this one spot of leakage here and uh, the rest of it seems pretty clean. So let's crack this open and hopefully the inside looks as clean as I suspect. Okay, yeah, looking this over, I really only see one cap over here that looks like it's leaking a bit. And the rest of them honestly look fine. So I'm just gonna replace that one cap to start and uh, we'll see if this works in the good 1400 HD.
All right, and once again, we'll do the fan test here because the power supply is hooked up to the motherboard and the fan is hooked up to the motherboard. So if the fan comes on and stays steady, then I think we're good. <laughs> so let me carefully plug this in as I don't have the top cover on. Totally safe. Not really. Don't try this at home. And, uh, yeah. All right, so that's interesting. The fan is on. Oh, it beeped. It beeped. <laughs> that was a good sounding beep. That was a booting beep. <laughs> uh, so the fan is on. The computer beeped like it's posting, but there's a horrible squeaking, squealing noise coming from somewhere. I think it's coming from the speaker. <laughs> and it's terrible. Uh, let me mess with the volume control and see if it really is the speaker. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely trying to boot, but the speaker is making a horrible squealing noise and I have no idea why. Yeah, there it is, boot, trying to boot <laughs> or booting. So let me put this thing back together and see just how far it's getting. All right, we are somewhat back together. Let's see what it does. ROM BIOS version 1.0.8. I hear the hard drive spinning up. Blinking. Spinning down. Uh-oh. All right, so stuck on a blinking cursor. Don't know what that means. Maybe the hard drive is dead. I mean, it is blinking like it's trying. Let's grab the hard drive out of the other machine and see if that one works. Oh, it's doing stuff. It said 1701C. Oh my goodness. Is it booting? Disk boot failure. Okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. What if we try a floppy disk? Oh, it's really screaming. Disk boot failure. Every time it reads from the floppy, it like dims the screen. <laughs> All right, let's try to boot with the floppy in the drive. Yeah, definitely hear that hard disk spinning up. I'll just reset. Okay, now it's just uh, in some sort of a boot loop. Come on, boot from that hard drive. <laughs> disk boot failure. All right, let's go into the settings to see if we can change anything and you can reach the settings with uh, control alt insert nice oh and let's check out the sweet backlight while we're in here hold please oh yeah look at that beautiful i could totally use this in the dark take that ibm pc convertible <laughs> But let's change the uh, CPU clock speed to eight megahertz. And yeah, there's nothing here about like boot device. Disk boot failure. Control Alt Delete works. CPU clock speed eight megahertz. IBM can't do that. Disk boot failure. All right, well, let's uh, salvage the hard drive out of the other Tandy and see if that one boots. Okay, so getting the hard drive out of here is kind of annoying because, yeah, I didn't film it, but let me show you the struggle. You have to take the whole drive bracket out, but not intuitively at all. You have to make sure that this hard drive controller card hidden deep in the slot here 
is not connected to its connection in the back. Let me show you right here because this will not lift out because this is stuck in here. And if that is stuck in this connector, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be really curious why you took all the screws out and it's still not lifting out. And I think somebody else was in here before and ran into the same issue because floating around in the bottom of this case here <laughs> was a single surface mount capacitor and there is a matching surface mount capacitor sized hole <laughs> on this hard drive controller card. So hopefully that bodes well for us and the hard drive just uh, didn't work because of this and maybe that's why the whole machine didn't work. Maybe this one capacitor in this card was throwing this whole thing off. So yeah, I'm going to put this card aside to fix at a later date. Unfortunately, the trace itself is gone. So yeah, that's ripped right off. I'll have to fix the trace. But yeah, maybe this card's fine except for that cap. Okay, so through the tried and true method of sticking the hard drive standing up on its side on top of the other hard drive so it's plugged in. Oops. Totally normal computing. Let's see if it boots. <laughs> it's making terrible noises. Oh goodness. That does not sound good. All right, well, let's try the other floppy drive. <laughs> Sideways, of course, so it doesn't short out. And we'll just YOLO our disc in there. Looks like we are back to blinking cursor and nothing else. Well, that's weird. I just switched it off, but it didn't actually turn off. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take this disc caddy tray off, which is super annoying, and look for anything obviously wrong on the motherboard. And there is no good way to pull this card out of here. You kind of have to like get your finger in there and you're gonna slice it open on this piece of metal. Oh, this is the worst. Ugh. All right, got it. <laughs> All right, well, I made a fun discovery here. There is a surface mount capacitor just laying on the motherboard, <laughs> which is weird because there are no surface mount capacitors on this motherboard. They're all through hole components. And on our little disc controller here, yeah, both of these capacitors are still attached. And there's nowhere else on here that a capacitor could have come from. And there was also a modem originally in this system, an adorable 2400 pod modem with an acoustic port. That's pretty sweet. But this is all through hole components as well. Yeah, I don't see anything else obviously wrong. None of these capacitors look like they're leaking. Okay, this little board I think is a voltage regulator or something. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not an electronics person, but let's bypass the one that came with this machine. I just have to make sure not to physically touch this because uh, yeah, that's gonna be live. Let's see if that makes a difference. Okay, that doesn't seem to quite work because the screen isn't coming on and the drives aren't firing. Okay, so I'm gonna call today's Septandy shenanigans here. And uh, we made a lot of progress. I mean, this thing wasn't working at all and now it does computer things. It starts up, it goes into its bio setup program. Uh, it just doesn't wanna boot off of anything. And you know, normally when I do these repair videos, I'm pretty confident that I know that I can fix whatever machine it is. But this time, not so much because I've never had one of these before. 
it's not a Macintosh, and uh, there is almost nothing online about how to repair these things. So I really think the next step is to recap everything. It seems like it is a power issue. I mean, when it tries to boot off of the floppy drive, the whole screen dims and then uh, it goes into a boot loop sometimes. But yeah, I'm gonna replace all the caps on the motherboard, all the caps on the power supply, the caps on that little power regulator board, and I have a very special card coming that uh, it's a bare PCB and we're gonna try to build it ourselves. And that card should hopefully let us get this thing on the internet. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more almost successes like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retro Tech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Dwight A. Spencer, Greg from Hrut K Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.